Alright, today for the screen installation job we have seven steps to follow. Most people can do this in about 30 to 45 minutes with a 7mm socket, small and medium sized Phillips drivers, and we also recommend having a micro needle nose pliers kit available and uh, plastic trim tools. It just makes the job a little bit easier. I want to call out a step four with the flex cable. Just use extreme caution once we get to that step. It has uh, tripped people up in the past, so I try to point out the detail in, in this video. All right, so step one here is to remove all four black seven millimeter screws from the back of the unit. They should just come right out, and once those screws are out, you can uh, pop the side plates off. They, uh, they come off very easily. A good tip is to keep track of your screws in a, black, in a bag or on a, a notepad or something so you know where they came from so during installation you can put them back in the correct spot. With the side plates removed we can go to the next step which is to remove the seven Phillips head screws from the back of the unit. Now that the screws on the back are removed, we'll go to the side of the unit. There should be three screws on each side, one facing horizontal and then two in, uh, in recessed pockets there. So remove those three and then uh, go to the opposite side and remove the three, one from the bottom right there, one in the recessed pocket and then one, one facing horizontal. With all those screws removed, now the rear cover should just lift right off remove it and set it to the side to continue with the job. Now we'll remove the two Phillips head screws to the left and right of the black connector. And then use a needle nose plier or plastic trim tool to disengage the little white electrical connector as shown. Next step is to remove these five Phillips head screws that hold the compartment box in place. Alright, now we can turn the unit on the side and just loosen the silver screw shown here. It, uh, it doesn't need to be removed all the way. After unscrewing it, flip it over and repeat the process for the other silver screw on the side. Again, just loosen it up two turns and uh, we can move on to the next step, which is to actually remove the compartment box. So there are little tabs, disengage those and then lift up on the module and set the box aside. Alright, I just want to take a moment here to explain the importance of being careful and uh, paying attention on this next step. There's been a few people that have broken off their black locking clip that holds the ribbon cable in, in place. And if that flies off, um, it's very likely to be lost or broken. And as a result, the touchscreen won't communicate and it requires a full module replacement. So watch the videos coming up here to understand how it unlocks and try and do that. Don't be too aggressive or use too much force on it, otherwise you'll break that clip off and it's gonna be a bad time after that. All right, so now you can see how the black locking clip works. Simply reach in with your needle nose pliers and uh, gently lift up and it will hinge over and you can push it up to, uh, to release the, the ribbon cable. It doesn't take much force, don't be too aggressive on it. Just unclip it and then uh, and then pull out the ribbon cable using that tab and try not to rip it because it's, uh, it's pretty delicate. With the ribbon cable disengaged, we can go to the six visible screws on the side of the screen, shown in the red circles here. Just remove those and set them aside. Alright, with those side screws removed, we can now move up this 
um, this rotating door assembly to gain access to the three remaining screws on the unit. So it's pretty simple, just pull up, as shown here, and uh, it's not going to break anything. It's, it's a gear assembly, so it'll just kind of rotate with a little bit of friction. And now you have access to the two middle screws on the top and then the bottom screw on the bottom. And we've got a picture here that kind of explains that in, in the red circles. Just remove those last three screws and your screen should be free to remove. All right, with all the screen uh, screws removed, you can simply pull the, uh, the old screen out. All right, now we can move on to installing the new screen. So first off, remove your inner screen protector that the screen ships with. Then we will route the ribbon cable through this hole in the middle of the unit. You'll want to be careful here as to avoid catching the ribbon cable on a sharp metal edge that would, uh, that would rip it. Once it's through and routed towards the back side, we can flip the unit over. Uh, obviously you want to rest this on like a soft surface or a towel to avoid scratching the, the face of the unit. Alright, now with the screen in place, we can reinstall all the uh, nine screws that were removed. Be, be gentle when you install the screws, they're going into soft plastic and there's no real need to really over torque them. Alright, now that your screen is in place, we'll want to attach the ribbon cable to the connector. So first, make sure the black locking clip is in the up position, and then slide the ribbon cable into the housing. You'll want the tab facing towards you as shown here. Slide it in the connector until it uh, makes contact with the back surface, and, uh, and then you can push that locking clap down, again very gently, it doesn't take much force and then uh, give it a little tug to make sure it's, it's locked in place and, uh, and if it is you should be good to go. Here's another view, um, another angle to show you how, the, how to get that ribbon cable in place. Just kind of slide it in there until it bottoms out and then lock the clip down. Just gently latch it right into place just like that. And if it looks like that, give it a slight tug and uh, it should be all set. Alright, now that your screen is connected and installed, you can proceed with reassembling the Q module in the opposite order of removal. There's going to be a couple things you want to check though before putting all your trim pieces back together. First, make sure that all your harness connectors are plugged in. There should be three or four depending on your model of vehicle. Be sure to get the blue cable too, sometimes people can forget this and as a result the display won't light up. Next, after plugging all the harnesses in, turn your car to the accessory position to make sure that everything works. It's a lot easier to diagnose issues if you don't have to remove all the trim pieces again. Thanks for your order. Please contact me with any questions. I'll be happy to help.